joined here with a number of state legislators to discuss fiscal reform and to talk a bit about legislation that has been introduced or will be introduced that relates to uh, important changes that need to be made to bring some sanity back to the budget process and, and the fiscal process in New York State. Last year, there were over 80 items, according to the Empire Foundation, 80 items in the state budget that have absolutely nothing to do with the fiscal aspect of the state budget. These items, these items which you know included things like the cashless bail and discovery, were items that needed to be debated. No matter where you stand, these needed to be, as they say in the legislature, standalone bills so that they could be discussed and debated and voted on on the merits of the bill. That didn't happen, and it continues to get worse. Each year now, this governor has used this method to essentially keep out of the hands of legislators, but more importantly, out of the hands of the media, out of the hands of the general public, the transparency in this test so that we don't get sideswiped with items such as recreational marijuana, where it's going to appear, it looks like it's going to appear in a budget bill. It should not be debated separately. Uh, the um, issue of um, the surrogacy. Possibly people in the room have different positions on it, but it should not be debated on the floor of the legislature. These commissions that give voting authority to change laws that should be in the bailiwick of the legislature, these things become contained in commissions that are in and created within the state budget. The list goes on and on and on and on. Some of the worst things that we talk about are things that we never get our arms around because they're in the state budget. Now, fortunately, there are senators and assembly members who have taken the same view as us, and they are, like I said, introducing items, all of which we in the conservative party support, some of which we recommended, but all of which we support, that they're going to go through, and, um, and then we can you know, talk a little bit about it. So the first person I'd like, I'd like to bring up is uh, Senator Daphne Jordan from the Albany area, and to uh, make some comments. Senator? Good afternoon, everybody. <clears throat> I'm proud to stand with my good friend, New York State Conservative Party Chairman Jerry Kassar, and Assembly Republican Leader Will Barkley, as well as Assembly Member of Palazzo. Uh, my thanks again to Chairman Kassar for your and the Conservative Party's recognition of my 100% rating for last session. But today, we're here advocating for good government by calling for an end to the state budget using, being used for policy enactment. The budget is the legal authority for our state to spend money, period. It's not a vehicle for the executive to circumvent the policy process by holding funds hostage in time appropriations to unpopular and often controversial measures. For the past several cycles, the governor has inserted into the state budget policy language that should have been considered as standalone legislation. From the minimum wage to bail reform, these measures warranted careful consideration by legislators, but instead were stuffed into the state budget. Using the budget process to secure policy enactment is an attempted political end run around the state legislature and all 213 duly elected state legislators. The state legislature is a co-equal branch of state government. Ours is supposed to be a system of separation of powers and checks and balances. Turning the budget into a policy document ignores those critical safeguards. Once again, Governor Cuomo is misusing the budget process to push through radical legislation that might never see the light of day through the regular legislative process. The executive chamber's take it or leave it position smacks of an authoritarianism that has no place in a constitutional democracy. Policy making through 
budgeting is also part of the larger, troubling, and ongoing creep of shadow government, where unelected, unaccountable bureaucrats and commissions, council and boards, usurp the legislature's rightful and responsible role in legislating on matters impacting the lives of all New Yorkers. Wage boards, campaign finance commissions, climate councils, the Commission on Legislative, Judicial, and Executive Compensation, they're all a part of New York's shadow government that's growing ever larger, ever larger and more powerful. The bills that Chairman Kassar, Leader Barkley, and I are advocating for today would restore spending and budgetary sanity to a state in desperate need of both. It would help restore the legislature's rightful prerogative when it comes to policy making. Those bills are Assembly Bill 3538, which I also sponsor in the Senate as Senate Bill 7564, and I will <clears throat> let Assembly Member Ponsano tell you more about that because the bill originated with him. But the bill would basically require broad and overwhelming support for any revenue increase to ensure that the revenue was truly vital to the entire state. It's another tool to force the state to live within its current means. The other bill is Assembly Bill 6018, which I also sponsor in the Senate as 7563, and that's Leader Barclay's bill, so I'm sure he will tell you more about that. Basically, the fundamental purpose of that bill is to ensure that budget negotiations are focused on financial and not policy issues. I also want to mention my other Senate bill, 3373, which restricts the ability of the executive to make laws via the budget. Section 1 provides that appropriation and reappropriation bills be constrained by existing law or by specific changes in law proposed and intended to amend existing law that may only be stated in separate legislation. Section 2 provides that appropriation bills submitted by the governor only contains items of appropriations and that each item of appropriation <coughs> specifically relates to some particular appropriation in the bill. It, it must identify the purpose of the appropriation, not include requirements for implementation, and does not modify existing law. Like the other bills, this legislation would make clear that the budget is to appropriate money for state spending, clearly enunciate what the money is being spent on, and shut out policy proposals that should be considered as standalone legislation. These and other bipartisan bills can help end the troubling trend of legislating through the state budget and end New York's increasing reliance on shadow government. The results will be a better budget, a more accountable budget process, and a stronger constitutional democracy, one where the vo voters' voices are truly heard through their duly elected representatives. Thank you. a situation where it's us against them. That's what's been going on in this day. So the man I consider our leader in the New York State Assembly, Bill Barclay. Well, thank you very much, uh, Chairman, and congratulations to you taking over as chairmanship of the Conservative Party. And before I talk about the legislation I want to discuss, I also want to thank the Conservative Party for being a great partner with you know, my part of the Republican Party very often, I'd say the Conservative Party is a conscience of the Republican Party. Sometimes we get a little bit off track and we always have the Conservatives to pull us back. And I appreciate the partnership that we've had with you in the past and I uh, look forward to continuing that partnership uh, going forward. Uh, I want to thank the Senator, of course, for picking up these bills and sponsoring the Senate. As you all know, I don't have to give you a civic lesson, but we have to pass in the Assembly, pass in the Senate, they get signed. Uh, by the governor, so it's great that we have good leadership like we have from the Senate, Senator in the Senate to push for these bills. Uh, you know, we're bringing this out because we're beginning the 2020 budget process. 
Uh, we heard the governor's proposals last week, and I think today the individual budget hearings began, so we thought this was a good time to publicize uh, this legislation. And for way too long, state budgets have been overloaded with policies that have no business being in spending plans. The process is rigged to advance the governor's agenda, undermine the role of the legislature, and distract from the hard financial choices that we need to be made uh, this year, particularly. And I think it's, it really is acute this year because we're facing, as you've all heard, a $6.1 billion shortfall. Indeed, uh, our Ways and Means staff indicated to me this morning that it might be even more, more like a $7 million shortfall. Uh, we take care of approximately 100, I think it's $180 billion for the taxpayers' money. $180 billion. When I started in the legislature, I think it was something like $65 billion. So you can see how much the budget's grown. And of course, we're already having an affordability crisis in New York. Our sky-high taxes are over-regulation. They're in terrible, terrible <coughs> business climate. So at this point, it's critical that we focus on, in my mind, fiscal issues and not other issues outside the budget. Uh, we, the, we should learn the lesson from last year. Uh, because of the three Democrats in the room, we got some very ill-advised, in my opinion, um, criminal justice reforms. You may have all heard about the bail reform that took place during the budget last year. And now we have 10 months into that, and all of a sudden you hear the Democrats who voted yes say, oh, maybe we have to go back and tweak this law. Well, you know, the fact that it was in the budget, what happened? Did they not know what the law was going to do when it was in the budget? So that's one of the reasons we really shouldn't have policy like bail reform in the budget. It really should be a standalone uh, bill. Uh, that's why I'm sponsoring legislation that require each section of the budget bill to clearly reference an appropriation to ensure budget negotiations are fo focused simply on fiscal issues, not on policy issues. Bill bills dealing with policy issues should be considered one at a time and not tucked away into the process where legislation is, one, negotiated behind closed doors, two, hidden from the public and the press, three, limited to a conversation. You know, we hear about this three people in the room, three people in the room, and debated and passed in the middle of the night. We should have open debates and dialogues on proposals like banning styrofoam, legalizing marijuana, <laughs> permanent fracking ban, and I think we even should have an open process of maybe uh, re redesigning the state flag. So obviously, these aren't budget items, and there's specific proposals that are going to impact millions and millions of New Yorkers. So I hope my colleagues in the Assembly, and obviously uh, with the Senator's leadership in the Senate, uh, will end this poor process. So I'm pleased to. Uh, <coughs> Join here with the senator and my good colleague, Bill Palmasano, and my other colleague, Carl Brabinick. I didn't see you there, Carl, but it be here. And obviously with the uh, Conservative Party, thank you, Mr. Chairman, uh, pushing these reforms. So thank you very much. And I'm going to toss it over to my colleague, Bill Palmasano, who's going to talk about his bill. take this action, it's going to take more thought and action 
and make it more difficult to increase taxes on the residents of the state. It should be more difficult to increase taxes on the residents of the state. And quite frankly, it's only fair. The legislature did that to our counties when we implemented the property tax cap. If they want to increase taxes above, above a certain amount, they have to have a supermajority. If it's good enough for our locals, it should be good, for, good enough for us at the state level. It should be good enough for the state legislature. It should be good enough for the governor. Practice what you're preaching. Practice what we're imposing on our local governments. Again, this is common sense legislation. It will force us to live within our means and be the right thing. Make it more difficult to increase taxes on New Yorkers because we already know they pay enough in taxes. So I'm proud to join all of you to support this legislation and push this agenda as we talked about the other legislation we mentioned because it's the right agenda for New York. It's the right agenda for the taxpayers of the state. It's the right agenda to keep people staying here so we can grow businesses and jobs, not see people continue to leave. So I'm proud to be a part of this group here and we'll continue to push this because it's the right thing to do. Thank you so very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm uh, Senator Carl Bravnick. I represent uh, Western Orange County and uh, uh, northwestern portion of Rockland County. Uh, but uh, as the leader was saying, um, it's absolutely ridiculous to have policy in the budget. Absolutely asinine. So we need to change that as soon as possible. I mean, we see this with uh, the horrible bail reform bills that were tucked into the budget in the middle of the night. And the same went for, uh, you know, when they renamed the Tappan Zee Bridge, the Mario Cuomo Bridge. You know, it's things like that that are just absolutely ridiculous. And it needs to stop. So I'm hoping that all of our colleagues get on board with this, that we can get this through. Uh, and also, you know, we need to uh, really attack uh, this horrible bail reform that every single day, there's a new incident going on in New York State, and it is harming and affecting the taxpayers in New York State in a very, very harmful and big way. So we need to get on that. I urge everybody out there, contact the Speaker's office, contact the Senate Majority Leader's office, contact the Governor's office. Tell them you want to repeal the bail reform measures that were passed in the budget last year, and we need to repeal it now. We have a bill in the Assembly, A8855. Every single member of the Republican conference has signed on to that bill, and we are pushing them forward. We have also multiple bills to do one-year moratoriums, to give judges more discretion. We need to get back to the table and reform this thing. We'd like to repeal all of it and reform it, but if we can reform it, that would be uh, a win for New Yorkers as well. So we'll keep fighting for you every single day. You have our promise on that. And I want to thank you all for your support. Thank you. Questions from the media? Are there um, questions? Yeah, I have a question. Um, well, actually, um, first of all, when the when Republicans were in power in the Senate and uh, all those years, they kind of went along with this budget process. And the argument that was always made was, oh, it's easier to do things that way. You're, you're thinking that maybe that is, that's not what we're doing. But I mean, if that, things get done that way, and some in the past they were things that Republicans wanted to. Well, I wasn't in the Senate at that time, as I, I just, you know, I'm a freshman senator. Um, you know, there's always give and take of things. Um, but for policy issues to be in the budget is not appropriate. The budget, as I said before, gives the state the legal authority to spend money. That is what the budget is. <coughs> so even if it took longer, even if it yeah, took longer, just, even if it took I'm, longer, even if you said you did something. Just because we've done it in the past doesn't mean it's the right thing to do it going forward. And I, not to, keep being this strong, but I'm going to. Bail reform, it really is a perfect example of something that was put in the budget. Uh, clearly, I don't think a lot of our colleagues from the suburbs and other areas realize the impact that this bail reform was gonna have, the public safety uh, you know, crisis we have as a result of that. And uh, now they wanna go back and do it. We, we ought to continue to push. 
Listen, we've always advocated for budget reform, at least in the assembly. We'll continue to do so. We don't think it's a good process. We think it should be opened up. It should be public hearings. And even though that may have happened in the past, again, we want to change it going forward to make this a better state, a better government state. This is, uh, for us, this is a like a number of years now. We saw this uh, moving on, and we were uh, concerned. And frankly, last year, I think, took the uh, concern into overdrive. And that's where we're here today. And you know, this is essentially a policy now of the New York State government, as opposed to an accommodation. And when this became a policy, a bad policy, you know, you, everyone needs to stand up, and they are. These legislators are. Uh, questions? Some Democrats have made noise about working to repeal the fact that you silver be a constitutional amendment. Is that something that any of you have been spoken to supporting, or depending on how this is done? Yeah, I know there's a few bills circulating now. There are some Republican co-sponsors on that. Uh, I haven't taken a position myself because I want to, this is a new bill, so I want to review it. Uh, so we definitely, if the legislature takes over, we just want to make sure that this is not the leaders of the legislature now negotiating budgets between themselves and you know, cutting the governor out. That doesn't help us. We really need to have a, I think, an institutional change with the budget. Although we have these public hearings, uh, that every member maybe gets five minutes to speak. That's why we don't want public policy involved in the budget. We don't have enough time to look at it. We should have those outside the budget. Public hearings, let's hear the impact. In bail reform, we maybe heard more from law enforcement and DAs. Uh, maybe that bill would have not been the bill that ended up being pushed into the budget. So we could be possibly open to changing that legislation, but I want to look at it. And also, I just don't want to transfer the power to the you know, speaker and the majority leader and take it away from the governor. Frankly, I don't think that necessarily solves the issue that we see. Questions? To the best of your knowledge, do the majority members in either house see a problem with the way things are done right now? Because if they did, that would really help you with getting things done in the future as far as adjusting how policy is formed. Well, I'm, gonna just, I'm just gonna say this. That's a failure of the majority, right? It's a failure of, of legislators that are only interested in pushing a political agenda that fits their, their constituencies as opposed to uh, filling an agenda that works for us on a statewide basis. Now, you know, we are not part of the party. I would say to you, we as a political party uh, would be hopeful, but we're not naive, that someday all the legislature would work with all the people. Well, you have some minority members like uh, Angelo Santa Barbara who says this bill reform is crazy, or some people who are more moderate who say, hey, maybe we should look at this. Do you get the sense that there are enough people who are, I guess, dissenters, for lack of a better term, to where some of these measures could actually have success? Uh, yeah, without a doubt. Uh, again, we're focused on bail reform, and it's a whole host of issues, but bail reform is the most tangible right now because we're hearing stories every day of uh, you know another uh, violent alleged criminal being released from prison. So we're going to continue, but it's not just that issue, it's budget reform. We're going to keep continue to pound the drum as, as a new leader. That's something I promised the conference. I'm going to be throughout the state banging the drum on all these issues. And I think when people hear from us, they understand that, yeah, that is a good idea. Or, you know, bail reform was a bad idea. And hopefully we'll get the media to cover some of this stuff. And it'll ultimately put pressure on uh, the majority's members and the speaker and the majority leader. And the governor. <coughs> and uh, Minority Leader Flanagan doesn't appear to be here, but I assume he's on board with this as well. Mm -hmm. I can't really speak for the leader, but yes, I would assume mm -hmm. so. I mean, yeah. Any other questions? Do you have any updates on your lawsuit against the um, public financing? Uh, yeah. We'll give you the update. There's no update. <laughs> 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 and we're anticipating any. Um, any moment now, uh, a decision, and beyond that, we don't have any additional information. Ralph, is that a good characterization? I haven't heard anything yet. I keep on checking my uh, email. <laughs> I thought you were checking your heart. <laughs> <laughs> uh, any additional questions? Without none, 